Is there a learning process for tunes after flashing my B8S4? Um, we've talked about this before. Yeah, There's this kind of adaptation yeah, that the not, ECU does. Not much, honestly. I mean, a lot of it's it's designed to, to be ready to go as is. Um, I mean, we when we're dyno tuning these, we're not giving them any time to adapt. It's it's the you know the raw mapping and the the calibration as it sits. So th there's some fuel trims and some some little stuff that comes into play, but uh, yeah, the performance numbers typically aren't going to change after, after time. To, to the to the customer, we 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 never. I mean, we never talk about this when when people contact us. We're never. When they have a concern with the tune, we never say, "Oh, you need to let the car adapt." Yeah, for a that's few not going to be an answer we give out. Is yeah. just let it sit there and adapt. It's so here's what this is: this 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 same thing happens in the audio world. So if you buy a pair of speakers and you bring them home, and let's say you have 30 days to return them, and you don't really like the sound, what does what does the typical audio shop tell you? Oh, you have to break in the speakers. They have to break in. It, it, it could take six months to a year or whatever. They, they make some BS thing up that uh, says that if you're not happy with it now, you will be in the future because this thing hasn't happened yet. So that will. Um, but, it, but there's no such thing as breaking in speakers, certainly not to the degree that a lot of companies say. Um, they're just trying to buy time and give the customer some type of answer that will appease them for the time being. And typically... You sit there, you listen to the speakers, and after, after so many weeks or months, you're just used to it, and you deal with it, and you move on with your life. Yeah, if, if the vendor can buy some time, kind of let, let you drop off their radar. then. So what happens in our industry, you buy a tune, you flash your car, you drive it for a couple days, you contact the tuner. Hey, this isn't as smooth as it should be, whatever, there's some issue. Oh, the ECU needs to adapt. It's adapting. Oh, you know, and it's the same exact thing. So they're just trying to buy time. And instead of going and addressing the real issue in the tune or the calibration, they're putting, they're putting the client off um, with, with a, a type of diversion or distraction yeah. to send the customer on a wild goose chase that the ECU still has to do something that hasn't done already. So, you know, we will never give that as, as an excuse or reason. Um, the ECU does do some adaptations, but it's certainly not to degree that... Uh, many tuning companies say there was someone on our facebook group our 034 customer group who said that a, a, a sort of well-known tuner in southern california said this to them and it's the exact red flag that i'm talking about here so well if there's an issue with our stuff we'll typically be sending you like data logging tools yeah. or, or you know having you check faults and some other stuff there's waiting for it to adapt isn't one of our uh go -tos. And, and no and no scenario is some noticeable problem with the tune going to magically correct itself because the ECU is learning. Yeah. And to be clear, this is a diff very different thing we're talking about than running like throttle body adaptions or clutch pressure adaptions and transmissions. Those are functions that get run that are, are literally just to, for the ECU to learn the end stops or, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the hardware that's within the component. And those are that's, very specific actions. Those, you those take. are functions you have to run on the ECU. We can send you instructions on how to do that. Not, not just run the car for X amount of days and it'll get better. Yeah. That's that's a whole different story. So